Thank you for your kind introduction. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of you this morning. And uh, I was looking forward to this moment for a long time. But it took a lot of patience flying that far to reach here. But I'm happy I'm here. And the bad news is I have to fly back. <laughs> but most of you too. But as long as we're here, let us enjoy each other's company. I would like to speak with you this morning about uh, moral leadership and about leadership in general and the role of we women in leadership. Now, I see all of you have this beautiful book and what I'm going to say is already written in the book. So I could just say, well, read, bye-bye, next time. <laughs> what I'm not going to do is read it for you, because I think you could read it yourself. But I just want to sketch with you, and you may ask me questions if you want something clarified. I would just like to sketch my way of thinking about the role of women in leadership, in moral leadership. Uh, as you know, leadership, as I see it, always traditionally focused on the material side of life. We are concerned, or leaders are concerned with the material things. How do we get money? How do we build homes? How do we uh, combat disease? Uh, for me, those are material things. And the question we should be asking is, why don't we have enough homes if we have enough money? And why do we have so many diseases that are curable? Um, but we are living in a material world. And I'm looking at the moon kids. Do you know which famous singer sang that song? Because we are living in a material world, and I'm a material girl. <laughs> Madonna. Yeah. Thank you, kids. <laughs> we are living really in a material world. I only realized that when I was writing this article. Um, and because we are living in a material world, uh, this same famous singer said, The boy with the cold, hard cash is always Mr. Right. And then she calls herself the material girl, because we are living in a material world. If you are living in a material world, you cannot be an immaterial girl, because you're then out of the game. That was very insightful. So I asked myself a question, what am I? Am I a material girl? And if that is so, how could I move to something else? Or should I move to something else? Now, that discussion about leadership, if it should be material or not, that discussion is not new. It was always around. And uh, uh, very important uh, German philosopher said, first, you have to have the material things in life. And if you don't have that, we don't have to talk about moral leadership. Because to say it in German, zu werst kommt das fressen. Fressen means, you know, not eating, but pouring food in, down your throat, you know. It's, he said, first comes, first comes the material side of the human being. With an empty stomach, you cannot have somebody thinking about moral leadership. First you have to eat, and when you finish eat, and you overeat, and you come obeys, then we could talk about you know, the moral side. And that was Bertel Brecht. Zuerst kommt das Fressen und dann die Moral. But 
I ask myself a question. We have enough to eat in the world. We have enough to eat. And the moral mess we see around the world is caused by those people that even overeat. So how do we, how do we explain this? Well, I'll try to explain it to you. Bear with me, I wouldn't be long. Because it's a short story. It's a story that you could uh, say in just as many minutes as Madonna take to sing her song. Because we are living in a material world, we have no time to think of moral, morality and moral thing and ethics. Some people even think, if you tell them, where is the ethics in your leadership? They think I'm inviting them to a dinner. Because ethics, they think, hey, is eat. Something like eat is in that word. We are focusing too much on irrelevant things. And because we are focusing on the irrele irrelevant things, that creates the mess we see in leadership. And the mess can only be solved by focusing on the immaterial things in life. And what are the immaterial things? Empathy, inclusive thinking, love another unconditionally as you would love yourself. Ethics, those are all immaterial things. So if leaders would only focus on being ethical, we wouldn't have people without homes, children who goes to bed without food, and all kind of diseases that are curable in the world. If we should focus on ethics in leadership, we wouldn't have the greed that caused, it, caused the bank crisis in 2008 where so many people lost their homes and all their belonging. If those bank leaders had focused on ethics, they would think twice and they would not uh, expose hardworking people to their greed. It's the raw face of greed when you have enough and you still want more. And you don't want that more uh, because you want to do something good with that more. You just want more to have more. I have one million or hundred billion and you know, but my neighbor have a hundred and one billion. Or I have two pair of shoes, but my friend has three, so I need four. Those are material things, doesn't matter. So when Bertolt Brecht says we have to suffice ourselves first on a material level, some people don't have an end to that road because of the greed. <laughs> so they'll never satisfy. They'll never reach the point where they could focus on something else that's not material. Now, if you look around the world, you take the map of the world in your head and just cross your fingers, go around the globe in all the continents. And what you see is things that a normal person would call abnormal. You know? The greed, the lack of empathy, uh, if I, I'm living in the Netherlands, in Europe, if I, if I just take Europe as an example, because Europe always takes other continents as examples for not being ethical, but let's take Europe as an example. What, what do you see there in recent history? A few, just go back a few months ago, refugees coming into Europe, the continent of the human rights, the continent of high morality, 
they say themselves, eh? that's the most wrong thing to say of yourself, that you are ethical. But Europe does that, goes around the globe teaching everybody ethics. And there come a whole group of refugees, as you have seen on television. And these well-fed European leaders, what did they do? They put barbed wire around their fences. They let people drown in the sea. And they went uh, on dialogue. And the dialogue went like this. Oh, they are coming here to eat everything we have. We cannot afford that. We have to do something. Let them go in another country, not here. We don't want those people in here. Or why don't they stay in their own region? You know, forgetting that if we talk about the Syrian refugees, those people never drop bombs on their own head. There are European bombs that were dropping on their head and American bombs. <laughs> so, you know, whose responsibility is it to help those people? Besides, Europe is a continent, they always say that, of Christian values, Christian Judean values. Yeah. Well, I'm a Christian myself, and I was taught that a Christian value means, you know, you could bring him back to one thing. There are many things, but bring him back to one thing. Love thy neighbor as thyself. A Christian value means unconditional love. So if you are so um, concerned with your Christian values, why don't you open the door and let the refugees in? Why don't you do that? I have the answer, of course, and as you have the answer. Because the leadership in Europe, in this case, is not based on moral values. They are based on materialistic values. They are afraid that people are coming in to eat their food, to take their wives as if the, those men want their wives. I think they have their own wives to take their homes, to take their jobs, very materialistic. So, what's the role of women? I think the role of women is to get leadership on the immaterialistic side of the values. And I think we could do it. Why? As you are sitting here, I think all of you uh, come out of a family where you instill the immaterialistic values in your kids. You teach them empathy, you teach them to love unconditionally, uh, you teach them ethics, and those values that you instill on your kids in the home, those values we have as women to instill in society. And if we don't do it, nobody's going to do it. Because I think women understand that it's like an empathy we have, that we have with, with our kids. You, you don't even have to talk it, you do it. So my uh, message to you is, I hope we could create, recreate that song of Madonna and don't sing, I am a material girl, but I am an immaterial girl. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very insightful and very humorous.